First, let's set the mood, the Christmas mood. Achoo! Time for the reveal of the doll. Now over here we have words. Love the packaging, very utilitarian. Let's find out what's inside. And here is our girl. Now, if you look very closely, you'll see a slight touch of dismay on my face. Because after many years of frigidly begging Mattel for long sleeves or gloves, they have still not relented. We do have a little cape made of tulle though, which means I won't just be freezing, I will be itchy and freezing. I like the dress, though I must say I was hoping for a different color, maybe a nice spicy spruce. But they seem to be in the cycle of just continually doing red, silver, and gold for the past few years. Now let's take an even closer look. Oh yes. Now, if you look here, you'll see. Now before making the dress, I had to go shopping for fabric. Before I could do that though, I had to let my dad run through his graceful daily stretches. And they taught you that in dance class? And that's what they have you do in the opening number of the Nutcracker? Yeah, you should see my outfit. I can't wait to see you in this. The 60 plus dance recital. <laughs> I kind of like that my jawline's disappearing. Jawline is disappearing? Yeah, look, well, seems very soft and cherub -like. I love. I'm really into cherubs lately. I'm gonna take the Barbie mobile since we're doing Barbie related errands. And so we pranced on into Johan fabric where I found the perfect gold cloth. Shiny cream. Or the perfect shiny cream cloth. I stopped into the Mart of Wall to get another look at the holiday doll. But alas, they didn't have one. Not one at all. Yeah, I came to Walmart for nothing. I came to this tech skate. Now we're going to make the dress out of fabric. Fact about fabric, it was invented sometime between the dinosaur era in 2003. If you've got something you'd like to make a dress out of but you aren't sure if it's fabric, well, the material can be recognized by its limpness and inability to stand on its own. Okay, so normally this is the sort of thing where I would draft a whole pattern on my dress form. But given that it's Christmas time, I wanted to give my dress form the gift of sparing her the indignity of being disrobed in front of all of you. So we're going to leave her dress for as long as, we can, is, is, as it's convenient. Making a bodice like this is basically just muscle memory to me at this point, so instead of even trying to explain to you how to do it, I'm just going to give you a recap of my 2023. Okay, I apologize, but it's gonna get kind of dark and serious for a second. January of 2023 saw the end of a long-term relationship I was in. That in itself was incredibly difficult, but probably worse was that at the same time, I was experiencing what seemed to be the crescendo of a two years long mental health and religious battle. See, it started with just a little bit of emotional pain. I'm not even sure if depression is the right word. It seemed a little bit more complicated than that. Anyway, it started with a small amount, but I was chastised for feeling that pain. Told that if you're a true Christian, you should never feel lonely because God is with you. So what did it mean that I did feel lonely? Was I not really saved? Was I going to hell? Obviously, that made the pain worse. Oh, yep. Please hold for this really inappropriately timed poll. We just started a little debate. I need everyone to weigh in. Growing up, my brothers and I would lick the popcorn bag, like after you eat the popcorn, tear it in the strips and lick the bag. My mom's acting like that was unusual. But I feel like probably most kids did that. Weigh in. Did you lick the bag? Anyway, it seemed like all the sources in my life that talked about God the most, and mind you at the time I was tuning into a lot of different churches podcasts, when referring to depression, they would use phrases like knock it off, just evict the depression. It's a choice and it's not all about you. So then on top of the pain I already felt, that added this feeling like God was disgusted with me for being selfish and he was annoyed that I wouldn't stop choosing this agony. This culminated in me reaching a point where life genuinely became unlivable. I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat, I couldn't go a full hour without crying most days. I hit rock bottom. I won't go into detail of exactly what rock bottom entailed, but it was bad. My dad called dozens of therapists and no one could squeeze me in for ages. Finally one did and she was great and she didn't think that God was disgusted with me, but it's like I was too far gone in my twisted web of pain to believe her. Around this time, my doctor started me on a couple antidepressants. It's scary to admit that because I know some people will judge me for it, but it has to be told because the way my life changed, holy guacamole, it's like the knots just untangled themselves. I could just think clearly and suddenly I believe God is probably like a nice loving guy who doesn't get mad when we're sad. Oh and it's worth mentioning not all Christians and pastors are so disdainful towards mental health issues or antidepressants. In fact, it was my sister who is a pastor's wife who gave me strong encouragement via a sermon to get on antidepressants. Suddenly I could sleep. After months of not eating hardly anything, I went to New York and I ate like half of the weight of Manhattan. Before I knew it, I signed a lease for an apartment in New York. I watched the Met Gala. I was having a stinking blast. So, okay, here's where the next plot twist comes in. Yep, to be continued. Good morning, what a fantastic day it's been so far. No, I have a morning routine. Every morning I wake up, I run downstairs, and I turn on my fireplace. <laughs> Today, I'll give you a little reenactment. I lay down like this. However, this morning I turned it on with a little bit too much gusto, and it was a little bit more like... 
it whooshed. I don't know if you can tell, but it singed some of my little lashes and my eyebrow, mainly on this side. So yeah, that was a good morning. So anyway, back to April of 2023. Around the time I started doing mentally great, I started having weird health issues. I discovered a lump at the base of my neck, a rash on my stomach, ear bleeds, yet they're like nose bleeds, but coming out of your ears. And then came the coughing fits. I'd get them so bad that I would like start to black out. I had to start seeing some specialists, which limited how much time I could spend in New York. Spoiler alert, found out I have another autoimmune disease, but like that didn't fully cover all the symptoms. Oh, if you're wondering what I'm doing in this clip here, well, I got carried away with a mock-up and turned it into a, like its own dress. And voila, I've spent day two making the dress. It's really only fit to be worn in the summertime. I guess I can turn my thermostat up there. As many of you know, in May of 2023, I went to see a house to try and convince my brother to buy it. And while I was there, I accidentally fell in love with it, put in an offer and bought it. A pretty spur of the moment thing. I loved it though. It was big, big enough to draw people together, big enough for guests who could stay for a long time, maybe big enough for kids someday, big enough that loneliness usually gets lost in it. This summer started out as one of the best ever, but then my stepdad passed away in July. I don't really want to talk much about that experience. It was a very hard thing to watch. Equally hard has been watching my mom grieve and trying to help fill a void that I know deep down no one can but him. We held his funeral at my house. It wasn't exactly how I envisioned this house would bring people together, but I was grateful for it nonetheless. Another thing I'm grateful for is the timing. My mom and I were just talking the other day about how fortunate it is that our worst times didn't hit at the same time, so we were able to be there for each other. I don't know how I would have handled that period of time if not for the medication I was on. Um, but speaking of the medication I was on, remember how I said my doctor put me on a couple of antidepressants? Well, one day my pharmacy, after a few months of filling it for me, said, we've left you a few phone messages but haven't heard back. You're not taking both of these at the same time, are you? And I was like, yeah, and they were like, well, they shouldn't be taken together. Have you been noticing any negative side effects? So, yeah, that explains a lot. So, moral of the story is, I don't know. You shouldn't be looking to me for your morals anyway. Maybe uh, trust your doctor, but also Google what they give you. Yeah, I have a lot of weird side effects. I made a lot of weird life decisions, but ultimately worth it for me. Worth it to not be how I was. There's no moral. Don't look at. Don't look. Too now to make the back, we're gonna do like the same thing, except we're going to tap into some of this extra. So you always want the back to be just a touch longer than the front, so that it sort of just sweeps the floor behind you in an effort to be a great guest. There you go. Clean up after yourself. Breaking news. I was just about to take a bath. I took my hair out of a ponytail, and it just fell like this. But are you kidding me? Why is it always darkest? Before the Why is it only ever dawning when it's dark? Why does my hair only look good when I'm about to wash it? So please pardon all the sawdust on my mirror. Do all my sawing in the bathroom. Like actually. Okay, I'm trying to build my character in an effort to be funnier. Okay, I should probably fill you in on this. So I know the first half of this video, I'd be giving a recap of my year and that that wouldn't be very funny. So I thought I'd make up for it, being funnier in the second half. But then I realized while filming, I didn't feel, I wasn't feeling funny. So I decided to put myself in uncomfortable situations in an effort to build character to ultimately hopefully become funny. I'm supposed to go to my mom's house and I'm walking instead of driving. Let's hope that fixes it. Now I can't promise funny, but I can promise that from here on out, the video won't be quite so serious, okay? Good morning, I'm feeling infuriatingly well-rested and unfunny. Here I am cutting out some extra skirt panels when I kind of lost Garyan. There he is! Okay, listen guys, if the editing seems a little off, I'm trying to edit this all in one sitting, meaning one 46 hour sitting. So if it's not good, will you please just pretend you never saw it? So my mom's been taking baths and she thinks her hair's been turning pink because she switched from showers to baths. That makes me sound stupid. Is that not true though, what I said? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry that that makes you sound stupid. A few minutes ago, she was eating some chicken and she's like, where do you want me to put the rest of this chicken? And I was like, I'll feed it to the chicken. She starts to walk out to feed it to the chickens. That's, That's obviously a joke. You said eggs to chickens before. Which isn't weird. Just like women eat their own uteruses. Chick their uteruses <laughs> Yeah. But we don't eat other women. We might eat our placentas, but we don't eat other women. Did that randomly come visit you? Yeah. No, still waiting. Do you want to tell the camera what happened? So we were pulled up to a stop sign in her Barbie car, and this lady rolls down our window and yells, Hey Barbie, I liked your scarecrow. And then she asks, <laughs> Can I stop in sometime? And mind you, I didn't know this woman in the slightest, but the audacity was just so entrancing, I guess, that I said, Yeah. She said, Yeah. <laughs> So I'm trying to keep my house clean because company could come at any moment. This is for the bottom ruffle, by the way. Now I just have to feed all of this fabric through the machine. No big deal, right? Another fun story of audacity. A couple weeks ago, there was like this weird streak where I had been recognized out in public like multiple days in a row. So it wasn't that weird to me when at a gas station, a man came up and said, excuse me, so sorry, but can I just get a picture with you real fast? And I was like, sure, okay. So then after he gets the picture, he's like, so what's your name? He did not rec he did not know who I was. He just wanted- After many hours of work, the screen is finished and I paid it so much that it, I almost puked. I for some reason thought that this fabric choice would be acceptable with this top. They're just gonna seam rip. 
I don't like my attitude through all of this. It is further proof that I need to build character. How do we build character? I would say we typically do so by going outside of our comfort zone. Where is our comfort zone? Mine is my bed. So in this quest to build character, to both be funnier, handle life's inconveniences better, I decided I need to remove myself from the comfort zone. I'm gonna try sleeping on the pool table tonight. Hopefully that fixes the problem and I wake up with an abundance of character. If not, then the next night I'm gonna have to up the ante. Maybe sleep in the chicken coop. Hopefully the pool table fixes it. Apparently lighting my face on fire didn't do it. Let's talk about fall 2023. I entered a parade just for the heck of it, and I went all out for my first ever trick or treat. Now we're gonna kill two birds with one stone. I am going to take a bath because my neck hurts like crazy. I'm also gonna do it in a character building way, veering from my normal routine. We'll move the saws aside and just. Nothing. Hello? My doll tea is mine and it's completely unencumbered by any form of humor. All that is stuff for no increase in character. This is where we're gonna sleep tonight. I'm not gonna lie, this looks super freaking cozy. Dang it. I was honestly pretty uncomfortable. The night was honestly heinous, but the waking up was kind of pleasant. Soon my dad came over as he always does for coffee. <laughs> what are you doing? Building character. Okay. <laughs> After we drank our spot of coffee, it was time to assemble the skirt for a second time. Then I broke down and finally used the mannequin, but I was able to do so whilst maintaining my gift of not disrobing her. Then after a hard day's work, it was time for girls night. We're watching a Christmas movie at Courtney's house and Ruthie just gave me a present. <laughs> Here I am making a seemingly infinite ruffle to go along the bottom perimeter of my skirt, which I hadn't made quite long enough. At this point, I was losing steam. I was just about ready to give up when I came across this very encouraging comment. It gave me the morale boost I needed to pony up and power through. After harnessing some stars from the cosmos and slapping them onto the bottom of my skirt, then creating a smaller skirt for my shoulders, all that was left was to make some dazzling gilded earrings out of oven-baked clay and glitter. And now at long last, the reveal. Hi, I'm Hallie Bailey. I mean, holiday Barbie. All the way here to the mall to get a picture with Santa and Santa's in so what could I do but fiddle fart around the parking lot and entryway and get more shots? This might be my favorite holiday Barbie dress I've made so far. What do you think? And do you prefer cool toned light bulbs or warm ones? For my last act before turning into a pumpkin, I went to Walmart to see if they had finally got some holiday Barbies in. They hadn't. I wish you a Merry Christmas, full of humor and character building, and a Happy New Year. But it's hopefully not a complete roller coaster. As always, screenshot your favorite part of this video, post it to your Instagram story, tag me, and I'll pick my favorite one and send you a holiday Barbie of your own. Who knows? Maybe it'll just be me in a giant box. Oh, no. Go for it. Be married tonight. I need a bath.